Oh, here it is. World News. Thursday, March 22nd, 1990. Namibia's own flag. I went to Germany in 1972 and my intention was to stay in Germany and then go back to America after about two years. Little did I know that my wife was, my future wife was waiting for me uh, and she was going to bring me to this country. And that's the way it worked out. I, I met her and, um, and I asked her where she was from and she says, um, you know, I, I'm from Africa. And I said, but you're white <laughs> and you're German. She says, yes, but my, my family went to, to Southwest Africa, Namibia, when I was six years old, and that's where my home is, and that's where I'm from. And I said, well, you think you're going to go back to Namibia? She said, but of course, everyone who comes from Africa always returns. And when she said that, it was like a lightning bolt went through my head, and I said, oh my God, I'm going to marry this woman and go to Africa. And what really piqued my interest was the flag of Anguilla. This flag was designed by a graphic artist. And, and when, I, when I read this, because I'm, I'm really fascinated with, with, um, with heraldry and these things. This is actually is a book, the background of this book is heraldry. And I was fascinated by the fact that one of the, the world's nations had a flag designed by a graphic designer and I'm a graphic designer and I thought you know damn it I want to I want to design I want to be I would like to design the flag of Namibia all of a sudden there was this competition was was announced that people could design flags for consideration by the committee to design the Namibian flag and I said wow this is this is what I have been waiting for actually this one yeah you can see I put the check mark here this is the one that I designed the original concept my original concept for the, the design of the flag was the letter N and that's what it the, the two edges and the cross uh, create the letter N okay I think it was Hagi Heinkop at the time he was the uh, designated um, um, prime minister at that time and he came in and said, you know, we should have a sun because, you know, Namibia is sunlight and strong sun. And they said, <clears throat> see here, one of these designs has a sun in it. So why don't we just take the sun and put it in that position? This is going to be a problem because in terms of vexillology, you cannot have a device in the outer quadrant. It has to be on the inner quadrant. This is the nature of, of correct uh, her heraldry. So they said, well, that's no problem. We'll just change the shape, the position of the diagonal so we can put the sun on the inner quadrant. This is in fact is a very close replica of the sun which is on the flag of um, the People's Republic of China, Taiwan. And Hage said, take the one off of the Taiwanese flag, that's a cool sun. And so that was basically, that, that was how the flag was born. The, at this event to announce um, the, to officially announce the new Namibian flag as well as to acknowledge the contributions of those who um, participated in the contest. It was something like two hours late. They finally made the presentations, you know, where this guy and, and I got, we got up and we got, got our letter of recognition and everything. And by that time, I think most of the, the journalists were so sauced that basically they just took the press kits and printed what was in the press kits. Because in the, in the newspaper that came out the next day and for that weekend, there was no mention of any acknowledgement to who was, uh, was actually instrumental and had, who had contributed to this process. 
And I thought, you know, there is a poetic justice in this. This is a new, this is a new nation. Why should they acknowledge a foreigner? You know? I mean, it's, it's about national pride. It's about creation, national identity. And here's this bloody American who, you know, designed this stuff. You know, like, can't we just forget that? And uh, so I felt, yeah, it's, that's okay. But this is the kind of stuff that I'm doing now. I'm doing more my own art, which has grown out of the commercial work. I mean, this is, that's why in this portfolio, this is stuff that I've done commercially here. And then, uh, and which has now gone through a transition to what I call my strange portraiture. <laughs> uh, and yeah, part of my, part of my, my doodle, um, categorization is um, the creation of doodles on grounds of opportunity. Grounds of opportunity uh, started off as agenda sheets. If you're in a meeting, you've got an agenda sheet and you're, you're sort of bored out of your mind, you start drawing on the agenda sheet. Okay, that's a doodle. And uh, my granddaughters, and they saw that what I was doing with these things, because I had done one doodle, which I showed in here, which is actually drawn on top of an image that my son did when he was a little boy in school. He drew this picture of the of a boy with big hands and bubble feet. Well, when my granddaughter saw this, they said, hey, that's really cool. We'll make you some frames. And they produced the, all the color work in both of these drawings were produced by my granddaughter, Kiana. I'm also a bonsai artist, that's, that's another, and that's an art form that I've been practicing now for 23 years. If you guys would like to see some of that, I can, yeah, we can, we can go and look at some of the bonsais. And my emotional makeup, I am definitely an American. Everything that I relate to is, comes from my American background, but this is now home, and I enjoy being here. My, my grandchildren are now here, and yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful. I think that's, that's what I have to say. I'm very grateful that I've been able to make a life here and that life is good.